Hello, my name is Emma, and in today's video, I am going to teach you how to be better at pronunciation. I'm going to teach you 15 ways to improve your pronunciation. So this is a very important video because I know a lot of students are very embarrassed with their pronunciation. Sometimes people don't understand what they're saying and they feel really sad about it. So this video will really help you if you've ever felt embarrassed or had trouble with your pronunciation. Okay, so let's get started with the first tip. So my first tip is about how we pronounce different sounds. Um, pronunciation is really about what your lips are doing, what your tongue is doing, as well as what your throat is doing. So one way to improve your pronunciation is to know what is happening here. Okay, these are all muscles. Um, you really want to get good at using these and knowing how to use them for what sounds. Okay, so you want to be aware. You want to be aware of what this area is doing. So uh, let me give you an example. Your lips. For some sounds, your lips are very spread, okay? Very spread and tense. So I want you to try something. I have this word here, beat, E. So you see with uh, the E sound in the center, beat, it makes me smile, okay? So that's what my lips are doing. They're smiling when I say this word, beat. It's the same with the word cheese when we take a picture, okay? Your lips spread out. Now I want you to compare this with the word boat. Okay, I have a very Canadian pronunciation for this sound, boat. Um, but when I say the word boat, look at what my lips are doing. Boat. Okay, are they very spread like a smile? No, they're actually in a circle, boat. Okay, so it's important to know what your lips are doing. Are they spread or are they in a circle? Are your lips, are they um, like coming out like a wolf would, like ooh, or are they not? Are they eh? Are they flat? So think about what your lips are doing when you're pronouncing different words and different sounds. Okay, the next thing is your tongue. Eh is your tongue. Okay, so what's very important in pronunciation is where is your tongue? Okay, so when you pronounce a sound, is your tongue at the front of your mouth? Okay, is it at the front? Or is it at the back of your mouth? Or sometimes it might be in the middle. So paying attention to where your tongue is can really help you when you're practicing these, these sounds. Also your throat. This is your throat, okay? For some sounds, uh, the sound uh, makes your throat move, it vibrates. For other sounds, you won't feel anything. This does not move. The sound actually comes from your mouth. So let me give you an example. We have uh, the sound here, t, as in t, t. And we have the sound here, d, as in uh, David, okay? So t and d. Now, if we compare these two sounds, you'll notice T, if I say t, t, here does not move. There's no vibration. T. Whereas if I just pronounce this sound, d, d, this area does move. Okay, so that's very important in pronunciation, especially with ed endings. When you're learning about the past tense, knowing um, if this is moving or not moving is very, very important. Okay, so again, Things to be uh, focused on when you're trying to practice a sound, you should be focused on what your lips are doing, what your tongue is doing, and what your throat is doing. Okay, so my second tip, the mirror, okay? Um, you don't want to really be focused on this while you're actually talking to somebody in public because that can be a little bit embarrassing, okay? So if you're practicing sounds, maybe somebody might look at you and, and think you're a little bit crazy. So this is something good to do at home. And it's good to look in the mirror and look actually at what your lips are doing, what your tongue is doing, and um, you know, do some practice. Do uh, practice different, uh, different words and see what your mouth is doing with each word. 
You can also um, look at other people and try to pay attention to what their mouths are doing when they're saying these words also, okay? So a great way to practice is looking in the mirror. Another thing you can do for practice is actually have a tape recorder or your cell phone and record yourself, okay? So you can say a sound, you can say a word, and you can film yourself saying the word. Because one problem a lot of students have is they make mistakes in their pronunciation, but they don't know they're making mistakes. They can't hear it when they're actually saying it. But when they record it, you can go back and you can actually maybe hear the mistakes you're making. Okay, so it's very good to listen to how you sound by recording yourself. Um, another helpful thing you can do is actually with your cell phone, okay? So on your phone, a lot of people have uh, voice texting, where instead of texting with your hand, you actually can just say what you want to say and the text will show up. Um, so if you have a phone that has this uh, for texting, it's a great way to actually see that you're actually saying words correctly. Because for example, if I say the word um, dog and it shows up as duck, then I know, okay, I didn't pronounce that word correctly. So your phone can actually be great way, a great way to um, check that you're pronouncing things correctly. Also, some students use Siri. Um, you know, they ask Siri a question. Siri, where is the closest bakery? If Siri has no idea what you're saying, then that's feedback. But if Siri, if Siri is able to tell you, oh, the nearest bakery is, you know, two blocks away, then you know, okay, my pronunciation for that question was really good. So using your phone can really help you with your pronunciation. Okay, so another key idea for improving your pronunciation is number five, learning the international phonetic alphabet. So phonetic means about sounds. Okay, so International Phonetic Alphabet really means the International Sound Alphabet. So, um, if you've ever looked in your dictionary and you kind of see, sometimes uh, you'll see brackets in your dictionary beside the word, and it has, you know, maybe the word, for example, B, and if you look in the dictionary, it says the word like this, this would be the International Phonet Phonetic Alphabet. It's showing you not how the word is spelt, not how to spell the word, but how to pronounce the word. So this alphabet will teach you how to pronounce a sound or a word. So it's very, very useful to learn. So for example, this word here, B, this is in regular English writing, okay? B-E-E, -E, B. But if we wanted to know uh, how this is written in the sound alphabet or the international phonetic alphabet, you would see the word written as this, b, and this is actually e in the international phonetic alphabet. So together I would know the sound is b, okay? So really great because uh, in English spelling is always a problem with students. Uh, sometimes the spelling does not tell you how to pronounce the word. So if you find that really frustrating and difficult, learning the International Phonetic Alphabet can really help you with your pronunciation. Okay, another thing that can really help you is comparing, okay? Uh, comparing different sounds or different words. So sometimes, um, you know, for example, you'll have a word with a E sound, uh, like sheet. You see, I smile with that. And then you'll have a bad word, like the word shit. So for this example, comparing the two words and seeing how to actually, what's different, sheet, shit. You see the difference in my mouth. Um, comparing two words side by side can really, really help you with your pronunciation, okay? Um, another thing that can really help is number seven, stress. Okay, when we talk about stress in pronunciation, we're not talking about like, you know, stress from doing a math test or something. Stress in pronunciation means louder and longer, okay? It's when we say a word and a part of the word we say louder and longer. 
So I'll give you an example on how stress can help. I have here two numbers, 13, 30, okay? When many students say numbers, people don't understand what they're saying. If you say 13, somebody might think you're actually saying 30, okay? So this is a common thing that happens to students. Stress is the way to improve this. If you know where to say the, the, the part of the word louder and longer, people will understand you better. So for example, 13, teen is louder and longer. Thir is actually shorter, 13. Now compare this to 30, okay? In this case, thir is louder and longer and t is actually quite short. Okay, so I want you to repeat after me. 13, 30. Okay, you see the difference there? So learning stress can really, really help you improve your pronunciation. Now let's learn some more tips. So my eighth tip, number eight, is about intonation. You should definitely pay attention and learn intonation. So what is intonation? Well, that's like the music of language. Different languages uh, have their own type of music to them. And so in English, it has its own music too. So if you think about this, this really means about when parts of what you're saying, your sentence, when it goes up at the end, like mine just did, it went up, or when it goes down, okay? So that's the intonation. So for example, I have here a question. Was it expensive? Did my voice go up <laughs> or did it go down at the end? I want you to think about it. Was it expensive? All right. If you said my voice, uh, it rose, it went up, you're correct. So you'll notice that different sentences, uh, different types of questions, uh, you know, different types of, of sentences have different intonation. So that's something to really pay attention to. Okay. Another thing that can really help improve your pronunciation is contractions. So what is a contraction? Well, a contraction is uh, when we shorten two words into pretty much one word with a apostrophe. Okay. So for example, I am, I am Emma, right? I am. Well, oftentimes in conversation, we, we often, instead of saying I am, we'll say I'm. So we'll use the contraction, okay? So we have I am compared to I'm, and we just have this apostrophe. Another example of a contraction is he will becomes hill. And I've drawn a little hill here with a man on top to remind you. So he will is shortened to hill. There are many contractions in English and they will really, really help you in terms of your conversation. Um, and they're very good for pronunciation too. Okay. Um, oh, there's one more I forgot. Uh, this one, I, I really like this tip, sing. Uh, even if you have a terrible voice, I actually am terrible. I'm awful, terrible at singing. Hopefully you'll have a better voice than me, but even if you don't, Singing can really help you with your pronunciation. It can help with intonation. It can help with stress. Um, there's a lot of great songs to sing. And also often when you sing, it makes you relax, okay? So if you're really nervous about your pronunciation, have fun, sing a song and that can help you with it also. Um, a lot of students ask me, are there any bands or any singers I would recommend for practicing uh, singing? in English. I would say uh, my top two would, and of course, anyone you want to practice to is great. Any band you like, you should definitely sing to. But for me personally, I really like Frank Sinatra and the Beatles. And the reason why is they sing slower, okay? A lot of new music, the singer sings very fast. And so it's difficult to hear what they're saying. With the Beatles and with Frank Sinatra, their voice is usually quite clear and they sing slower. So I find that it's a you know, really great uh, band and singer to sing to. So I highly recommend practicing your singing in order to uh, improve your pronunciation. Okay, another tip that can really, really help you 
is tongue twisters. Okay? What's a tongue twister? You probably have something similar in your language. I'll give you an example of an English tongue twister to kind of show you what I mean. She sells seashells by the seashore. Okay? So what I just say? I said something very fast. A tongue twister is to help you with um, usually two or three different sounds. So in this case, um, the sounds I was looking at was sh and s, sh, s. So sh, oh, she sells seashells by the seashore is a way to get me practicing these two sounds. Um, so at first, what I would do with a tongue twister is start very slowly. She sells seashells by the seashore. And then after you practice a bit, you can go a little bit faster. She sells seashells by the seashore. Until finally, you can go really fast. <laughs> really fast. She sells seashells by the seashore. Okay. So tongue twisters are a lot of fun, and we have them for many different sounds in English. We have Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Okay. We have, um, uh, there's, there's a bunch of different ones. If you Google uh, tongue twisters, You'll find a bunch, and these are great for practicing different sounds. You can even have a competition with your friends. See who is the best with these tongue twisters, who can say them the fastest and correctly. Okay, another great tip uh, when you're trying to improve your pronunciation is when you learn a word or a sound, try to think if there's the same sound in your language. Okay, I remember when I was learning French, there was the sound eh. And I, for some reason, I was having a lot of difficulty with it. I couldn't figure out how to pronounce it when I was looking at French words. Then I found out that we have the exact same sound in English, for example, in the word met, eh. So the word, or the sound is in French and English. So once I knew that it existed in both languages, I was able to find an example of an English word, and then whenever I would try to pronounce a French word with that sound, I'd remember the English word, and it would help me with the pronunciation. So for example, in French, uh, the word for party is fête, or, or yeah, fête, and that rhymes with the English word met. So it's good if you can think about any sounds in your language that also exist in English. Um, you can also think about sounds that don't exist. In many languages, uh, R doesn't exist, and L doesn't exist, or maybe uh, there's one sound that is both R and L, um, whereas in English we have two different sounds. Okay, so try to come up with what are the things that are the same in your language, and what are some of the differences, and you know, you can definitely practice those. Okay, number 13, feedback. Feedback from friends, okay? If you have any friends who are native speakers of English, or even just, you know, your friends who are also learning English, you can ask them for help with your pronunciation. Sometimes, uh, you know, especially if, if you know people from different cultures, uh, different people from different countries have different pronunciation problems in English, okay? So you might um, have trouble with R, and maybe your friend has trouble with, um, you know, the S sound in English. So you guys can come together and you can practice and give feedback, help each other out on the sounds, okay? If you know a native speaker of English, you can do the same thing. You can ask them, did I pronounce that correctly? Did I make a mistake? And, you know, hopefully they can help you with that also. So using your friends is, is something that uh, I would highly recommend to do. Number 14, probably the most important tip I have for you today is practice. Practice, practice, practice. In English, we say practice makes perfect. And that's very true for pronunciation. It's very important to practice the sound as much as possible until it becomes automatic, okay? Um, the more you practice, uh, the easier it will get. So definitely practice as much as you can. But also, I would recommend, I've told students about this before, you know, practice as much as possible. Um, and I had one student who would practice on the subway and everybody would look at him like he was crazy because he would sit down and he would just keep repeating the sound again and again and again. 
Um, and then people wouldn't want to sit beside him because, you know, they thought he was a bit crazy. So be aware of your surroundings when you practice. Again, I highly recommend practicing at home in front of a mirror if you're, you know, repeating the sound again and again. Um, finally, my final tip, there are some really great websites you can check out for pronunciation help. Um, if you want to practice the International Phonetic Alphabet, which I mentioned earlier, the University of Iowa has a really, really good website where uh, it shows uh, what your tongue is doing, what your lips are doing, and you can actually see a, a diagram of the mouth and you can kind of watch it in slow motion. So it's a very, very good uh, website if you're interested in American Standard English. Another great website is Ingvid, all right, at www.ingvid.com. There, you can actually take a quiz uh, to see that, you know, you've mastered these different tips. And you can also check out a lot of our other pronunciation videos. We have pronunci pronunciation videos on everything. So I highly recommend coming there to our website to check it out. Until next time, take care and good luck.